Today is Thursday, September the 19th, and I think what we expected is starting to play out. There are not enough buyers at the top of the S&P 500, where it's triple topped now, and I'm going to show you that on the chart, to keep the market going. So the market is pulling back. Uh, it's going to take some volume and some commitment to break through a level that hasn't been breached three previous times. So we're looking at the volume in the three markets, and it's typical volume. Lower than relative volume, but typical. And right around midday, 11.30 in the morning, we started to creep down. All three markets started to creep down, whereas the NASDAQ finished a little bit up, the Dow lost a little bit, and the S&P was a little bit flat. So this is typical of exhaustion, and the exhaustion, I think, is just beginning. So what we're seeing, well, let's look at the um, advancers and decliners. Third day in a row, I believe, well, last, yesterday the decliners led advancers, but the day before that and the day before that, they were pretty even, and they're pretty even now. We're going to see a little bit of a tick down, not very much, a tiny little bit of a tick down, and we're getting back to that zero line, which we said we would hit. I have a feeling, and that's why I'm positioned in 68% cash, that we're going lower than that. I think the momentum is coming out of the market right now, and we're seeing it in the S&P. We're seeing this little... There's not much movement here, so if we look at the, the top, which is right there, that is the all-time high for the S&P. Let's just put that mark right here. And you can see that if that's the highest close we've ever had, we haven't quite triple topped, but every time we get close to it, we come back. The gap is below us. Uh, the neckline of this shoulder, head, shoulder, acted as support yesterday. It acted as support last week several times. Um, it's going to get tested again, and then we go down to the gap. I just feel that's what's going to happen. And Apple um, had a bit of a down day, down a dollar seventy-eight which may not seem like a lot, but it's a harbinger. Caterpillar, still continuing to go down. Now we've fallen below the 200 and the 8. So we closed right here, just below the 200 and the 8. Uh, and the Chiku Span, where did, what did the Chiku Span do? Look at this. This is our lowest point of the day, right here. So I'm going to put that line just directly there and look at that. The Chiku Span got support on the bottom of the cloud, the Senku Span B, which is also where the 50 moving average is. So we would expect that because that's a double coincidence. That point right there is the bottom of the cloud, and it's also the 50 SMA from 26 days ago. And that's what the Chiku Span saw, and that's what provided support. But if we lose that tomorrow, then we're going to go down to one. Uh, 128.51 and we're going to go down and we're going to seek the top of that cloud to see if there are some buyers there. Let's take a look at the volume and you've just got decreasing volume. Nobody's stepping in to buy Caterpillar um, this week or the last two days of last week. We had a little bit of a bump on Tuesday and Wednesday last week but that's all we saw. GDX, um, I still think it's going up and we came back and just repeated what we saw on Wednesday. So we went as high as we did Wednesday and we closed where we opened on Wednesday. So we've recovered the tiny loss from yesterday. Whirlpool continues to drop down as expected. Uh, WDC, a um, little bit of a, of a bull flag here. We can draw that in and we can take our little channel line here and we can draw that little bull flag channel in here. And let's keep an eye on that. But we found some good news for the chip maker stocks. Um, there's really no reason to think that WDC is going to uh, outperform. I'm going to take a look at Snap. 
but I mean, if you bought it, great. You're still, it's still a good decision. It's not something that I want to do. I'm not buying anything right now, um, except security stocks that can bear, uh, not a recession, but a pullback. And T is one of those because it's got that 5.6, 5.7% dividend. Let me just double check. Today it's 5.5% dividend if you were to buy it. I just think that it's, uh, I'm, I sold it. I'm just about to say that I th I'm glad that I hold it, but I sold it. And I'm certainly going to buy it back. And 3582 would be a nice idea, nice opportunity to buy back. But I think that there's an equal opportunity if things start to sell off, the T comes down slowly, slowly, slowly. And that's going to be what I'm going to call. I'm going to call from this point here. The T goes down a little bit slowly and is going to look for support on the cloud. Now that's a pretty much a bold prediction because it's a prediction going out to the middle of October. But I think that's what we're going to see if the rest of the market continues to just churn along. So let's put in a little bit of a channel marker here for the S&P. Bring that tool up here and Let's watch this channel for the S&P. And let's see where we break out, if we break above it or we break below it. This is a flag, a bull flag, what we saw um, in one of the other stocks we were looking at. This is a bull flag. This is a pennant formation. This is a flag, this is a channel. but. Um, Anyways, don't want to belabor the point here. Um, the S&P is in a bull flag, and typically it breaks higher, but unfortunately the bull flag is topping out at a previous high, and that's going to be tough to break. That's my thoughts for today. Tomorrow's Friday. See you tomorrow.